five most important parts of a walk around. Yeah. What's so a, we what's get, a walk we around? We get this question a lot. Should we do walk arounds? Another question we get is, how do we get people to do walk arounds? <laughs> right? That's the most common one. And so we're we're going to talk about very, very specifically the things that are really important to a walk around. And we're also gonna talk about some things that people perceive to be important that aren't, which might surprise you. So great. <laughs> okay, so number one in importance of doing a walk around is do it. Sounds so easy, doesn't it? You gotta do it. Yeah. Most people don't do it. They might say they do. Yeah, but they don't. The, the next one goes right with that is do it at the car. So a walk around loses is all of its magic if you're doing it alone and the customer right. is inside. It's like having a Broadway play and not having an audience. And you just go out there and perform. Now, I can't remember taking a car in in recent memory where the advisor didn't do the walk around without me. And it surprises me every time for a bunch of reasons. One is they've lost all control at that point. Second is I'm sitting there with nothing to do for quite a while, right? They've detached. There's no rapport being built, nothing. And also it pretty much tells you the story of customer comes in, doesn't know where to go and finds an advisor at their desk, then the advisor goes and does the walk around alone, which means that I was confused of who was gonna help me or where to go for a, a specific amount of time, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's insight too. So you gotta do it, and you gotta do it at the car or truck. Yeah, so a news flash is that the customer does not want to be in control. We almost force them into it in those situations where we don't tell them what's going on. Right. Okay. Now the third most important part of the walk around is creating a connection. So a lot of times advisors think or managers even that the purpose of the walk around is to find out what's wrong with the car or even to, uh, you know, a lot of advisors will walk up to a customer and they'll say, uh, did you have an appointment? The walk around is not to figure out if they had an appointment. What if they don't have an appointment? Now what? You're not going to help them? Like, yeah, but they get branded it's, first. It's such a redundant, like, it's a stupid question. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> it is. Yeah. And also, are you going to diagnose the check engine light? No. So the check engine light really is secondary to building rapport and creating a connection with the customer. And I've said this a million times that it's not about the commodity. People fall in love with the idea that they're a Toyota dealership or a BMW dealership or a Mercedes dealership. That is irrelevant. It is irrelevant. There's tons of other places that can fix a Mercedes or a Toyota. It, you know, it isn't about that. It's about your connection with the customer. That's, it's the relationship that you create. So the first part, the most important part of the walk around after doing it and doing it at the car is creating a connection with the customer, making friends um, and talking about the things that matter to them. So looking for things on the car or in the car that help you build rapport um, and a just asking them like, hey, where are you headed today? What are you doing? Getting them talking about anything but the car. Yep, it's such a departure from when I was trained, when I was a service advisor many, many moons ago, is that literally, well, I wasn't trained to do it, but my coworkers said, you better do a walk around in the car. And of course, I'm like, well, what's a walk around? Explain that to me a little bit. And they're like, well, you have to go around the car and look and see if it's got damage. Because if, it, if, if it's got damage and you don't note it and the customer says we did it, it's coming out of your pocket. The only reason I was told to do walk-arounds, like the, the thought of the customer being there, the thought of connecting and actually asking questions, like it was 1,000% about the commodity, such a, in hindsight, like such a failure and opportunity for me to connect with people right out of the gate. Now, the next one, if I stand 
200 to 500 yards away from the drive, but let's say I can still see it, but I'm way, way back. So I can't hear anything, but I can see the service drive and I'm watching an advisor do the walk around. I can tell if they have this next one or not just by, by watching. Yeah. And that is control. So if an advisor doesn't have control, then one, the customer's at their desk inside, which is total loss of control. You have zero control. You're not building rapport. If the customer's on their cell phone, if the customer has their back, right? The really, really good advisors have control. The customer is following them or they're telling the customer where to go, but they have control. And the thing about control that you want to understand is if you have control, you have created compliance in the customer. So if the customer feels safe and they're following your direction and your lead, you have a much better chance of getting them to maintain and repair their vehicle later on. If they don't trust you and you don't have control and you don't have connection, you're going to have a, a lot harder time and it'll become more about price. So I guarantee you in a service drive where discounts are high and sales are low, the reason why is because they don't have the connection or the control. That's right. And control is physical. Like I can tell if the, we call it in our advisor training, we call it the customer on your hip. Now follow me. We're going to walk, you know, we're going to do this, but it's, uh, let me know when you're done with your call so we can, right? Tell him like, get off your phone. Right. Like we're, this is important. I always say, I would say, I'll wait. It's important. And then I step back. Yeah. But you're gaining compliance and compliance leads to trust because if you're letting somebody take control of a situation, you are subconsciously saying that I, that I'm trusting this process, right? That's right. Yeah. We got to make it a party. A lot of times the reason why you're discounting, the reason why customers aren't coming back, the reason why you aren't selling is because the customers don't trust you more than any, right. anything else. So first one is do it. Second one is do it at the vehicle. The third one is connection. The fourth one is control, right? Yeah. And then the last one that goes with control is trust. You have to have the customer's trust. So if the customer comes in and they don't know where to go, they don't know who's going to help them. There's complete chaos everywhere. When they do find you, you're on the phone talking to an extended warranty or calling parts or whatever it is you're doing. You never actually connect with the customer and you go do the walk around, you come back. It's like, okay, so your check engine lights on anything else. And it's just a transaction. You're just making them feel like a number. Like it's, they're just a part of a process that has no emotion or care built in. It, you wouldn't treat your worst enemy this way, let alone a friend. Yeah. Then you're not going to have trust. So control and trust go hand in hand that you want to have trust because trust leads to retention and sales. So having a clear, you know, uh, um, understanding of that really, really is going to help you in, in the long run. So do it, do it at the car connection, control and trust. Thanks so much for watching this clip of service driving revolution. We're uploading new stuff every day. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, call 8333-ASK-SDR and we'll answer your question on the show. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. For special deals on our books and training, head over to offers.chriscollinsinc.com. Now that's offers.chriscollinsinc.com. I'm Chris Collins and I'll see you in the next video.